Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode we're going to be looking at this little black box by Light Panels. So this thing is their Apollo Bridge. So I'll give you a quick rundown on what this can do. So it can receive data from various inputs and then it changes that data to wireless or wired DMX for controlling your lights. So for example, um, this thing has a Wi-Fi hotspot. I've got an iPad here. I can dial in my light settings to this iPad and that then sends the signal via Wi-Fi to the bridge here and this sends it out to the uh, lights via Lumen Radio. Now, in addition to that, you can also use this device to run lights remotely, say from the other side of the world via the internet, or you could run them from a different part of the complex using a local area network connection. Okay, so before we get into the review, I better do a better job of explaining what this is, just so we're quite clear on it. So you might have a DMX control software. Now that can be uh, on an iPad like this, or it might be uh, on a desk or something like that. And you've got a light that can function off DMX. Well, this thing here acts like a bridge. So this thing connects your controller to the lights. Now it can do that wirelessly if the lights have built-in lumen radio. It can do it via a dongle, so a receiver like this that can plug into the hardware uh, input on the back of the lights, or it can do it via a DMX cable out of this to the lights. All right, so let's quickly cover how much this thing costs and what you get for your money. So this thing sells for a staggering 1,900 US dollars. So for that price, you'd want it to be a very good transmitter, which it is, we'll talk about that later. All right, so for your $1,900, uh, you get the little black box here, you get the antennas, you get a power supply, you get a not so stylish cardboard box, and you also get a leaflet which has uh, uh, downloads for software to get you on your way, and also um, a download to get you to video tutorials to help you set up if you're a bit confused. Now let's get into the pros and cons. I've only really got one con, and that is the DC power in. So it's nine volts via USB-C. So my downside to that is uh, I don't have any batteries that can operate this thing. So um, I would rather it had something like a four pin XLR and I could put that into a DTAP, but it doesn't. Now there is a solution which I'm gonna be running on set and that is a Tether Tools D-Tap to USB-C adapter, which sells for pretty much next to nothing. Now, I just wanna clarify at this point that it does come with a power supply. So I'm talking about the USB input being a negative in terms of running it off batteries. Now, the next thing, I'm not sure if it's a negative or not, but it is something that jumped out at me, and that is the wired DMX input and output. It's only got the one female connector. So if you want to feed DMX into this, you're going to need a male-to-male -male adapter, and chances are, if that comes as a surprise, you're not going to have one. Now, you can change the status of this port, whether it's input or output, via the software, which we'll cover later in the video. Now, the reason I'm not sure if this is a negative or not is because my DMX is only one universe. So I'm guessing that if you're using something like this over multiple universes or with a big desk, you're probably using the LAN connection anyway. Now let's get into the positives. And the first massive positive with this thing is the Lumen Radio signal strength. So to test it out, I set it up at the front of the house and I uh, grabbed a receiver and went for a walk down the street to see how far I'd go before the signal dropped out. Now at about 250 meters, the signal did start to decay. And at about 270 meters, the signal was getting flaky. So by flaky, I mean if I held the receiver low, I got a weak signal, whereas if I held it up high, I got full signal strength again. Now, if you're metrically challenged, to give you an idea of 270 meters, this is how far it is. Now, 270 meters is a long distance off a Lumen Radio transmitter. I was quite surprised, but I do want to point out that is clear line of sight. So that means at the end of the road, I could still see the transmitter. There was nothing in the way to block the signal. So the next test I did is I left the transmitter at the front of the house here, and I went round to every room in the house to see if I still got strong signal strength. Now in every single room of the house, I was still reading full signal strength on the receiver. Then I thought, well, I'll take it into the backyard, the opposite side of the house from the transmitter, and see what signal strength I get with the transmitter going all the way through my house. And much to my surprise, it still comes up with two bars. 
Now the Wi-Fi signal strength is equally as impressive. I took a walk 200 meters down the street and I was still getting two bars of Wi-Fi reception. Now the next thing that's a positive with this is there is no perceivable lag. Whatever command you put in, it is instantaneously getting through to the lights. Now I've used other systems like this in the past where you've got a Wi-Fi link to a box and then to the lights and there always seems to be a little bit of a lag. The next positive for me is the DMX output has a super high refresh rate. So if you've got a light that doesn't like the slow refresh rate of a Lumen Radio receiver, you can bypass that problem by plugging into here. Now the next plus for this system is it has a TMO2 Lumen Radio transmitter. So the TMO2's advantage over the previous generation of Lumen Radio transmitters is that they are Bluetooth enabled. So what that means is you can get something like an iPad, you download the CRMX toolbox, which is free, a Lumen Radio app. You can connect to your device. And then you can do things like uh, change the universe that it's operating on. So for example, you could have multiple of these running on different universes, giving you each an additional 512 DMX channels. You can also do things like set your loss of uh, signal behavior. So if this thing loses the DMX signal that's being sent to it, or if you lose your iPad by you know, walking out of range and then coming back in, this will keep transmitting the last signal it got so it doesn't drop out to black. You can also do things like update your firmware, set up whether this thing is working as a receiver transmitter and adjust your signal strength if it's creating interference. Now, if you don't have access to the CRMX toolbox and you need to make changes internally, you can still do that. So all you need is a device that has a Wi-Fi uh, capability and then set it to the Wi-Fi that's on this. All right, so the password's written on the back and then open up a internet browser and type in the IP address that's on the back of this unit and then enter in the password, which is also written on the back and hit enter. And that sends you to an internal homepage. So on the internal homepage here, you can select um, your bandwidth that you're using for your Wi-Fi connections. You can select your inputs, uh, your signal inputs. So you can select Lumen Radio, XLR or SACN. Yes, I got that right. Um, you can also change your universe settings there. So even if you don't have um, the CRMX toolkit, you can still make changes in this unit. Okay, now we're at the stage of the review where I have to be totally honest. I'm a small time gaffer, so I work on uh, corporate videos, uh, TV commercials, uh, music clips, uh, the occasional indie feature film, but nothing that requires a massive big DMX lighting setup. For me, a big DMX setup might be 120 channels, maybe 16 lighting fixtures, that's it. So I've never used uh, ArtNet, I've never run DMX over IP. Um, so in terms of the rest of the capabilities of this device, in terms of running it with the LAN or WAN uh, inputs, I, that's out of my realm. So I don't know anything about that. I don't want to uh, talk about anything I don't know about on my channel. All right. So last thing we'll talk about very briefly is when you buy this, um, on the brochure here, you can download uh, the Lightitions app, which is a free app for getting you started um, with your wireless DMX. Now, a very quick review. If you're running uh, Light Panels products, if that's all you've got, then this free app is actually pretty good. Um, you know, for a free app, pretty amazing. Yeah, you, know, you can save things, you can adjust, make adjustments at, uh, you know, fingertip adjustments, off you go, no problem at all. But if you're running other brands of lights, um, this app is not so great. So I tried running uh, my Felix Q5s, light matte spectrums, uh, Titan tubes. Uh, clearly nobody's thoroughly tested the profiles. So I wouldn't feel confident you taking this onto a job, this app, if you're running other manufacturers' lights. Uh, there are other things I don't like with this app, like uh, if you're patching lights, you actually have to know the DMX address of each light you're patching. It doesn't auto patch. But for a free app to get you started, it's not too bad. But if you're looking to buy um, this transmitter receiver, uh, my advice to you is if you're running other brands of lights, you're gonna to have to drop some money on something like Blackout or Luminaire. But in terms of the hardware, this thing's really solid. It, it's blown me away with how strong it, it transmits. And it, in the week or so that I've been testing it, I haven't had uh, any problems with it. I haven't had any lag with commands going to lights. 
it's just been awesome. All right, I'm Andrew Locke. See you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear, which will most likely be the Aperture 600X.